Well, sorry about that, guys. Okay. Ooh. All set? All right, Don, I think we're good. You're good now. Go ahead. All right. So looking at November, um, we're, we're in line with the, the budget so far. We're at 47%. Uh, revenues received. I know we had our second quarter billings a bit lower than it was last year. Uh, however, when you look at what we've budgeted, um, the bill to date for water use is about $400,000 more than we budgeted. Now, again, that's if you take the budget divided by two for your two quarters and you look at it you know, I know the, the, the billing doesn't necessarily work out in four equal quarters, mm -hmm. but just with that data and knowing that we've reduced our, our budget last year by $100,000 to kind of plan for any anticipated decrease to the tier three uh, based on usage. Uh, again, we're going to have to monitor it, but it, we're in okay shape right now. Um, Something that's not in here, you'll probably notice, is uh, the sale of water to Linden Ponds is a little light. It's only because the November and December uh, payments appear to be uh, processed in December. So that's, that's why it might look a little light. But otherwise, on the revenue side, we're looking okay. And then general expenses were 35% actually spent to date. So uh, nothing really sticking out there. I'd be happy to take any questions before I move on to the proposed uh, health insurance credit I have. I don't have any questions. No. Okay, so the other document I sent was uh, the health insurance credit. So basically in our indirects, we had an estimate of uh, 1,919, about $160 a month. Uh, the retiree or the, or the retired spouse was here through October, leaving uh, a credit due of 1,279. So I want to share that calculation with you before I did the adjustment to the indirect transfer to get your approval. I know you're already approved of getting a credit. I wanted to make sure you were in line with this calculation before I did anything and uh, didn't want to have any complaints. So, um, be happy to take any questions on that. And if you'd like to vote on that, I'd appreciate that as well. Any questions, Lee? Uh, no, I think uh, you prorated it very annually, uh, like it should be. I appreciate your work in this and I make a motion that we accept the credit that Don has generated. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Don. Thank you. And then just the last uh, worksheet I sent was the FY23 updated indirect cost worksheet. Didn't really have that as a planned discussion today. Just wanted to share that with you for you, to, you guys to have some time to look at it and we can get into questions at the next meeting if you have any. Um, in terms of when the budgets will be needed, I know the town side general fund budgeting, uh, our presentation will be, no, October, uh, January 18th. I've reached out to Chris to confirm when he expects the enterprise funds to be presented. I don't know if he'll be expecting that the same day or not. Historically, it's been at least a few weeks behind that, but um, we're, we're getting back into our normal schedule where you know, the last few years we had a June and a May town meeting. So um, let me get back to you folks on an exact date of when he expects us to, to be able to present enterprise funds and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I've reached out, I'm, I'm just waiting for his response. Thank you, Don. Okay. Don, I have a couple of questions about the uh, indirect cost worksheets. It seems as though uh, they've been the same for uh, as long as I've been on the board and they may need to be updated depend uh, since our systems have been upgraded and we should be taking a look to see whether or not some of those actual costs are actual costs, if they could be tweaked or not. Okay. Um, I don't know when that would happen right now, honestly. Uh, we have made changes. 
mostly based on on your recommendations or requests. So it hasn't not changed since I've been here. Um, but <clears throat> if there's anything specific, I'd be happy to look into it. But um, I don't know if that exercise would be done right this second. All right, but before we accept it, I, I would like to uh, get some review of some of the costs. Maybe after Christmas. Lee, can you be more specific as to what you mean by review of some of the costs? I'm not, I, I Don may know, I, I don't really know. Um, I'm assuming she's, she's referring to the allocations based on estimated time spent. Yes. Basically, es estimated time spent. So, so just give me one second. I'm on a Zoom call. I'm just going to let them know. I need to um, okay. If one there's any, yeah, I mean, if there's any that we can look at, sure. I'm sorry. I have to I have to take a call. My it's a doctor's call. My daughter has COVID, so I just need to talk to the doctors for a minute. So I'm going to excuse myself. Go ahead. That's more important. So yeah, I mean. We can we can look at. I don't know how in, in depth I'll be able to go between now and after Christmas. But um, if there's anything specific you you think might be overstated or or out there, we haven't had significant system changes, so not really sure what you're referring to on that. But I, I'd be happy to entertain and, and look into if there's anything out there that you, you're thinking is 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 wrong. I guess um, lack of a better word. Um, yeah. Well, you know, I'd like to. Uh take a look at some of the time spent on uh, our work. But we don't do time sheets, Lee. So I don't want to get into an argument on this, but I'd be happy for you to sure. ask what specific areas, I guess if there's really only one area that, that we show allocations of time. So there are specific jobs. We can't, I don't think we have time right now to go through an extensive, or is it cost beneficial to do that <clears throat> on either side? So yeah, Lee, Lee, I would suggest like if you have something, just put in, in an email and just send, send it off to, to Don. I think that's the best thing. Okay. Right. Because again, I mean, they're, they're estimated time. So, I mean, I can look at mine. I know just in this last year, I've definitely done more than the time that's on that allocation. I know that for a fact. I'm not going to go back and charge you. And I'm not going to change that as going forward. A lot of things happen. We had new rates going in. We had a lot of presentations, a lot of work. So things are going to, from year to year, be a little bit uh, higher and lower in the time spent. But so, so John, I kind of figured out that, and like Don on Marblehead. So when you do the FT water, 0.025 for uh, for the town manager is, is two and a half percent of his time, right? I'm just kind of guessing with the numbers. <coughs> the 0.025. Again, I wasn't really prepared to sit in. Oh, no, and talk, no, no, I was just talk specifically. It's, it's a curiosity question. That's all. I'm, I'm not arguing the numbers. No, no. Let me just see if I have it easily to pull up. Sometimes light dawns on head once in a while. It's a good thing. So, town manager, 0.025. Two percent. Yeah, the two and a half percent of his time annually. Yeah, okay. So, that's, really, um, that's really nothing at the end of the day. Right. Yeah, I mean, the biggest cost is, is Jason because he's he's allocated 0. 0.7. Um, yeah, I'd be, ha I'd, I'd be oh. happy to look at it if there's specific areas, but to go to go through in detail, like I said, we've gone over this every year and I've made adjustments down based on your requests. So, um, yeah, like Steve said, if, if there's specific areas, please let me know. And then maybe next year we can plan for a, a a bit more of an overhaul. It's just not going to happen right now. So this is so. So we will vote on this before your fiscal year in July and going forward. Right. So th th again, there's an allocation for next year's indirect cost, <coughs> which you'll you'll need budgeted, and it's a four thousand dollar, forty four hundred dollar increase from last year. Yep. Like two percent. Um, and this would go into effect as of July 1. Gotcha. Now, I have a question about the uh, 
audit cost, forty seven hundred dollars. Okay. Do you have oh, a question about it? Yeah, I, I, we really aren't getting any audit report from the auditor, from what I can see. Well, I shared with you the financials, didn't I? You shared the financials. The financials. And we'll make sure that those are sent to you every year instead of just being on the website. Yeah, but the financials are what the town puts together. And it just has a cover page, uh, you know, a cover letter from the auditor. It doesn't have the old traditional audit report of the water department from the auditor that I have seen. I'd love to see what you have seen because there, there is nothing of that sort, unless you had a specific engagement done for the water department. Otherwise, it's going to be for the town of Cohasset, water and sewer in general, all the appropriate, all the funds audited as an entire financial statement. So if you have something with a letter directly to you from an auditor, most likely it's not the annual audit. I know it's not the annual audit. So I'd be oh, happy okay. to look at what, yet, what you've seen before and, and explain. But this is the, the annual financial statement audit. Yeah, because I've been going through a lot of old paperwork. And since uh, we've been involved in town business for a long time, the right. audits. 250 years. <laughs> yeah, that's about how long I feel like I've been here. But I have some old audits that show, okay, it broke down every single department. But I guess it's not done that way, right? Again, I'd be happy to look at what you have. Financial statements are done on a GAP and a GASB basis. They have to be followed and they're similar. If you look at our report compared to other reports of other communities that do a comprehensive annual financial report, they're gonna be very similar in, in form. Now, some of the substance will change a little bit depending on what they have going on, uh, but this is consistent in how audit reports are done. Um, so again, without knowing what you're referring to, Lee, I, I can't really, I re can't really uh, provide an opinion or, or a comment. But if you have something uh, in PDF or something that can get scanned that you can send to me, I, I'd be happy to look at it. Okay, when I'm feeling better, I'll do that. Okay. Well, if there's not any other questions. Um, so, uh, one other question uh, about the town taking part in tier two yep. in the water bills. How is that moving along? How is it moving along? So I have, I have notified Chris and I've notified the school department that uh, you are looking into it. Okay. I mean, I don't think it's a good idea. And you know that, but I've, I've, I've notified them and I don't think anybody else will think it's a great idea. But if we want to you know, if you guys want to look at it, I, I think you should document, you know, what the difference will be and what that impact would be town and school. Well, I'm just concerned because it does not look like we're going to be opening the well field anytime in the near future. And the loss of revenue from that, and with our increasing expenses coming in with the GAC, I'm concerned about where we're going to cover our expenses. <coughs> Can you think of another revenue source? I think you'd have to calculate what, what your expected loss is before we start doing that. Uh, based on what I'm seeing, I mean, I mean, so far, I'm not seeing this big deficit that, that you are. So may, maybe I can get some clarification. Well, considering uh, what we saved for six years uh, running the well field full time, and now it's gone. So it's an increased cost is what you're saying. We're not losing revenue. It's an increased cost. Mm -hmm. 
we're increasing our costs. Okay. We're increasing our sludge and everything else. And I'm just concerned about making sure we cover our bases. That's all. So did look for so was none of that none of that can. planned at all when we were doing the, the rate study? Was this an after fact? I, I guess I I'm a little confused. Is this just kind of coming out of nowhere? What was not planned? Well, the shutdown no. of the well field, the increased cost of sludge, or whatever you just had mentioned. Um, I don't think that was included in the rate study. Jason, did you include that in the rate study that the well field was going to be closed down? No, it was not. Yeah. So this is something that is unanticipated after the rate study. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna have to have a, a look at that, and I think you guys will have to come up with a, an estimated cost of this and, and what what that impact is going to be. And then uh, don't forget when we did the rate study uh, at the last minute, uh, we determined to eliminate two categories from tier three. And yep. then uh, at that same time, I did suggest putting the town on to tier two. And then we reduced we reduced the user charge budget by a hundred grand, if you remember, because of some of these changes. I think we've been through this a few times already. I think we have too, but um, so this is the well field. Jason, let's, let's chat about this a little bit more as you want to understand this. Yep, we can talk about, Carl did a, Carl did a calculation at one point about what that cost was um, to use the well field versus the treatment plant, what the cost to treat was. Okay. But I mean, it's 10% it's of, the, of the water in the town at a, let's say 10% increase in cost to treat. So it's, 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 it's a fairly low number. Okay. Either way, just having that document will help with any of these conversations going forward. And then we're going to be increasing our cost dramatically as soon as we get the GAC up and running. Yeah, I believe that was already factored in though, right, Jason? That was just factored into the rate right study. Mm -hmm. That was like a $300,000 adjustment from what I remember. Correct. Okay. Steve, thanks for attending. Anything else you have before? I know you have to leave in a couple of minutes. Um, the aeration of Lily Pond and Lily Pond Milfoil and pretty much. Um, the aeration we're, we're looking now. So, so it was a success. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't cause a, our biggest concern when we turned it on was causing a major stir up of, of organics from the bottom of the pond. We didn't see that. Um, so we talked about it today. Um, we're probably gonna shut it off now for the winter. Um, and then reactivate it in the spring. Um, we were gonna leave it on all winter if we saw a stir up occur, um, but that didn't happen. So um, we are going to shut it off until March at this point. Um, and then the milfoil is still, you guys agreed to that proposal last meeting and we wait, not, no updates till March at this point on that. I still got two more minutes. We can keep going, see how far we get. Okay. Uh, there was one question. Uh, with our last PFAS uh, report from the meadow, it came in high. I had that question as to whether or not it was the dumping on the well field that an excess rain that caused the height number to jump at that time of a year like it did the year before. Has anybody looked into that any further? I don't know how I would look into that, Lee. No, I'm just saying, has there been another number? We had the PFAS number come back a year ago. That's why we shut down the well field. And then all of a sudden our last PFAS number was high again, 
but it came in a month earlier. Could it be because of the dumping and the rain? Causing the number to jump. I'm just asking, you know, a hypothetical question. Why would the PFAS number go up suddenly for the one month? It's, it could be any of a million reasons why the number jumps up um, seasonally. Most likely it's groundwater elevation in the, in the aquifer. The last time it jumped significantly, it was high elevated groundwater um, a scenario. So short of going in there and putting wells in and, and testing everything, um, there's no easy way to find the source. It's in everything. It's in, there's outfalls that dump into the meadow from the whole hillside. So everybody's grass clippings, what the grass clippings they throw in there, anything anywhere on the hillside goes into catch basins, manholes, and travels directly down into the meadow. So everybody's lawn fertilizer, everything is going into the meadow. Um, stuff off of their cars, everything is going down to the meadow. Okay, it has no correlation with the amount of dumping that is illegally done in the meadow. I, I, I don't know, Lee. Yeah. I, next time you see a dump down there, how about this? You see the dump, I will grab whatever's there and we can test it for PFAS. I mean, that's the only, that's, that's it. I mean, I have nothing else. I mean, I, if somebody's dumping leaves, leaves don't have PFAS in them. Um, the other one too is if you if you if you want to report them too, I looked on the website. There's actually an illegal dumping button on the town website. So if you're seeing illegal dumping, go down there, take a picture, and report it to the police. So folks, I have to fly. Listen, everybody in the water department, fellow commissioners, everybody. Hope everybody has a wonderful Christmas, happy New Year, happy holidays, and uh, everybody stay good. Thanks, you Steve. Steve. See you, Steve. You Thank too. You. Hey, see you guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay. So, how about uh, town meeting capital projects warrant articles? So, I sent you guys those two, the two proposed articles for town meeting, one being. Um, Beachwood Street from King Street to uh, Boundbrook Bridge. Um, they want to pave that next year. So we're putting that one forward to be done um, this coming summer. Um, and then the other ones, uh, we bundled all of the remaining 23 and 24 water main projects together in one um, article to then put forward um, the idea being to try and apply for state funding um, for the projects. Um, so that was why we did it. In the end, um, we did shift some stuff around. We did, we did remove the 3A water main and added some other water mains that are in paving areas that are the 1900s vintage um, or early 19, late 1800s vintage pipe um, to be removed before the 1960s pipe on 3A. Um, so if you have any questions about those two, feel free to ask. Okay, thanks, Jason. And how about Elms Meadow and Whitney? Do you wanna vote to, do you wanna vote on those? Sure, Lee, any questions before you vote? No. Okay, I make a motion that we approve the two warrant articles that Jason has proposed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'll also let Chris know to put a placeholder in for, for a rate um, when the warrant opens as well. Okay, Elms Meadow and Whitney Crossing update. I'll leave that to Carl. Or Fred. 
What are we on right now? I'm sorry, I lost track. Elms Meadow. Elms Meadow, Whitney Crossing. Crossing. Okay, sorry, thank you. Carla, Fred, can you take that? As far as Elms Meadow, as, as Lee said, the um, November test came at 20.8. 20, 20. Yeah. We've uh, sampled again last week. Those results won't be in until uh, mid to late January. Uh, in conversation with DEP, they're seeing an increased level of PFAS this year, whether it's because of all the rain that we had or not, um, they do not know. But they're seeing it, seeing it an increase everywhere. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. So yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's everywhere then, the PFAS, maybe, like you said, it's in the rain, it's, we did have a lot of rain over the summer it, months. They are seeing it in, in precipitation at yeah. this point. Okay. All right. And then lily pond, milfoil, and algae. Oh, wait a second. We did we finish the uh, Whitney Crossing update? Okay, sorry. Whitney Crossing uh, is back online pumping. As far as the uh, true up, we're quite a ways be behind. Um, Hingham has asked that we uh, activate the chlorine system and start to chlorinate that water that we deliver to them. It's in the contract that we are obligated to do that. It was never done from day one. And I, I have to think that it was probably because it was around the time that uh, the town exceeded THMs and they did not want to add more chlorine. Just to add to that, they weren't pushing too hard. They they um, said we could get it done in the next few months. I, it wasn't a fire drill by any means, so they're very reasonable about that. And I'm also working with, with Fred and the engineering side to get the um, chemical feed system permitted with DEP as well um, and the associated things, so the, the paperwork associated with that. Lily Pond. That was just that we're waiting for March at this point to um, do the <clears throat> vacuum dredging. Okay. And Elm Street, that's great news that that's gotten essentially completed. Yeah, 100% complete at this point. All right. And how'd it go with the, I know we approved 150,000 for ledge removal. Was that needed? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how they, what method did they use to remove the ledge? They just whole rammed it. Would they do? They just used the uh, the the mechanical. They just uh, banged away at it with the uh, the, the hammer. Paper. Yep. And it worked. Yep. It was some bad spots, but other other than that, they they got everything in. Okay. And how did they charge? Was it like per hour? Or? We had a uh, we have a a um, price per cubic yard in the contract. And what was that? Two hundred fifty dollars a cubic yard. It's not bad. No, it's going to be a big extra. Uh, I, 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 he's going to. He hasn't billed us yet, so he, he's, um, he's a small business, so he's going to bill everything come January first. Um, he goes, I'm, I'm, I have enough money to pay everything, by the, so on my side by the end of the year, and. If you run a small business, you, you don't want to have cash in the bank. So he's going to not send us a bill until January 1st. Okay. Well, that's great news. Uh, Bear Hill tank lease. Um, they went out, they did their site investigations and um, they are pulling the building permit um, before the end of the year. Okay. And then Sludge Lagoon. Sludge Lagoon, so, so we're working with 
Fred's sludge, international sludge expert from Woodard and Curran. Um, he has this piece of equipment um, that he's recommending we um, look to purchase from a, um, a wastewater plant in Florida. Um, we're trying to finalize what that's gonna look like. Um, but basically what this, this um, does is it would, we'd pump out of what I call, I always call them the wet lagoon and then the back lagoon. So the wet lagoon, they'd pump out of it through this unit and clean water would come out of one side and thicken sludge on the other. So the idea is to cut down the amount of work that the bag has to do by, by reducing the amount of water going into the bag um, as they feed it. So um, we're working with Fred's guy to basically to, to get this unit pennies on the dollar. It's, it only has 1500 hours on it, um, which is a really low number of hours. Um, so the goal is to get that in place uh, by the time the spring gets here. Um, and as well as we're looking at, based on some discussions with, with him, changing our, our polymer feed location to inside the plant, um, as well as out at the lagoons. Um, he said it'll improve our, um, our lagoon performance by doing that. So we're gonna do that over the winter as well. Great. Any, Lee, do you have any um, meeting notes for approval? Uh, yes. There is a uh, meeting notes from November for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any commission comments? Uh, yes, I just wanna say thank you to Carl for all the years you spent with us. It's been a pleasure working with you. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Carl. I second what Leah said. Hope everyone has a great holiday and we'll uh, see you next year. I hope your Bye. daughter's doing okay, John. Thanks, yeah, she is and, doing well. Um, and Lee, I hope you're doing okay as well. Me too, Lee. Well, I'm recovering slowly. Well, good luck, Lee. Thank you. I'll be- um, Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays. Merry, Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye.